Hey there, how are you today? My name is Dana Zamara. You've landed on AstroCast. Uh, this is your forecast for the full moon. We have a full moon coming up here, uh, depending upon where you are in the world, March 17th or March 18th, 2022. And uh, we also have equinox coming up. So equinox, turn of the wheel, turn of the energy, entering into a new season, a new season of your life, perhaps. And there's a lot of magic and mysticism in this in particular uh, full moon. So first thing I want to say is uh, when the full moon happens, and I want to share my screen with you. So I'm going to go ahead and there's so much. And I really just love um, this process. Okay, I'm going to put my glasses on. I can see so much better. This is such a, a beautiful uh, <laughs> rendition of what's really happening. So. You notice here the moon is all the way up at the top here. This is a full moon in Virgo. And directly across it, we have the sun, both at 27 degrees. So first of all, let's just drop into the numerology of that, right? So the numerology, 27, 2 plus 7 is 9. And 9 in any religion or school system or education realm that you work with, the number 9 is, the it's an ending. It's an ending of single digits. It's... Um, if you look at, you know, the mala beads or the rosary, there's 108 um, beads or seeds and eight plus one is nine. So anywhere you really read about, you'll, you'll see that the number nine really is a number of completion, but it's also a number of beginnings. Okay. So, you know, this full moon happens in uh, Virgo. And so that means the sun is in Pisces at 27 degrees, uh, 9, 17 p.m. Uh, Hawaii Standard Time. I say that because I will be in Hawaii uh, during this uh, full moon. That was very purposeful. And then uh, 12, 17 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in Los Angeles. So depending upon where you are in the world, you will feel a little bit of a different shift. Um, those of you on 318, 2022, well, guess what? add that up, I guess what the numbers are, nine. <laughs> Not so much for you, those of you on 317, so it's okay. Um, but this is really about finishing of a chapter of your life, a chapter of your energy. It's, it's, it's also a bridge um, of transition. So uh, I, I've spoken about this before where it almost feels like you're entering into like, you know, when you touch, you see those movies and you go to touch the mirrors and they turn to liquid and then you're like on the other side, you know, like that's really the type of energy we're leaning into uh, right now. It's, it's a time to let go. And I talked about this in the week we forecast. It's a time uh, to let go of the things that are weighing us down. And it's funny, I was just at a conference this morning about this and the woman completely not into astrology, just leading her group of women said, ladies, it's time to let go, let go of the past, let's go of the old paradigms, let go of the ways that you define yourself, you know, and I, it was one of those like wink, wink from the universe, you know, like, yes, this is time. And whether you believe in astrology or not, it's, it, you feel it in your body. And this full moon in particular is really about um, letting go of our past completely, just really, you know, blessing it and, and saying thank you so much and allowing it to, um, allowing it to, to be in the past. And which means, you know, it's very easy to say, I've let it go. I've put it in the past. But notice if when things come up, if you like dredge and pull it up and throw it at someone or, you know, don't, a better way to say that is how you feel in your body when another instance comes up and you want to heal all layers. So you don't want to just speak like, oh, I'm over it. I've let it go. It's easy. Post about it. It's over. I've let it go. Okay. Really? How do you feel in your subconscious body? Right? So work with all the layers. That's what Virgo is about. Virgo is about order and structure and following one step at a time. Virgo likes order. I have five planets in Virgo. I know about order, but Virgo is also the healer. Okay. So allow yourself the space that you need to um, organize your thoughts and your life so that you can like 
drop right into the heart. I'm going to share my screen again because I want to go over all the different aspects that are happening right now because there's a lot. Um, if you look at this chart, you'll notice that there's everything is below. <laughs> Everything's below the horizon except the moon. The moon is like, I looked at this, I started laughing. The moon is like holding on to everything like a little pendulum. And I love that, that visual. You know, here's the moon at the top and everything is just wah, wah, swaying side to side. You know, over here you have Pluto, Mars, and Venus uh, sitting there, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But then look at all those freaking planets in in Pisces, right? So you've got, oh my gosh, you have uh, Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, and the Sun all in Pisces. You know, and and that's kind of uh, it's kind of a, a big deal. That's a stellium. So there's this energy that's hanging by the moon that is very magic and very mystical. And yet there's there's like a necessity of some um, some like heaviness, right? So the moon can't possibly hold all those planets. <laughs> think of it that way, right? This is kind of a funny way to think about it. Think about too with this full moon, you know, as you as we enter into this next uh, season of our life whatever that season is for you but for the globe it's the um the equinox and it's aries so aries is the first sign of the zodiac while pisces is the last right so hmm, isn't that interesting so with this turn of the wheel where are you moving to what is it that needs to be let go of so that you can truly move into this next season of your life this turn of the wheel, this turn of your energy. It's a very pivotal moon. And, you know, it's so funny when I talked to my friend Sarah about hosting this retreat in Hawaii, we talked about it in November of 2021. And I said, we should do something for the equinox or maybe the full moon. I could do it in March. It's the only month that I could do it. And we were both like speechless when we noticed that we had the capability to create a retreat that started on the full moon, Hawaii Standard Time, and ended on the equinox. Like, wink, wink from the universe. So whether or not you're in Hawaii or your favorite place or you're in struggle, right? Like maybe you're in a point in your life where you're like, I am having the hardest freaking time. Find some moments to be quiet. And just ask yourself, what the bleep can I let go of so that I can feel a sense of peace? Honestly. And if you think about it as like, well, I want to let go of this relationship, this person, this title, this job, this thing. I want you to dig a little bit deeper and ask yourself, what is that person, situation, um, tangible item represent to you? Right. And because that's really where the oomph is. Okay. All right. Let me share my screen again. All right. So uh, let's see. I have so many notes. I want to make sure I don't miss a thing. Um, Pluto is trining the moon. The sun is sextiling the moon. So, um, I mean, sun is sextiling Pluto. So here's Pluto, right? So it's creating a trine to the moon and it's creating a, a sextile to uh, the sun. So this is Pluto's about empowerment. Pluto's about transformation. You know, um, this is this is about purging what you don't need and in that letting go you will actually receive that which you're looking for right and it's so funny because the, again i keep looking at the moon up above there all by itself it's in its own hemisphere and this is really about dedicating yourself to your own path your own thing that you shine so brightly about and it, it really is your life and now is the time to remember that like this is your life and even for me when i think about this is my life you know i tend to think like wow how many times in my life have i done for the other or compromised what i really desired um aside from you know necessity right when have I maybe not stood in my truth? Those sorts of things. Like remember these moments in time and just make a commitment to, to not do that anymore. You know, this is a big healing process and, and try not to get caught up, especially now in any type of conflict with the other or with um, it, just try to stay out of conflict because I, I really want your heart to be able to tell you exactly 
what you're feeling. And if you tell me you don't have time to sit quietly, I'm going to say, set your alarm clock for two minutes earlier than you normally get up or stay awake at night two minutes longer or start documenting how much time you scroll on social media and then maybe back off that two minutes, right? This is a real big time to drop into a you and, and, and really um, give yourself the space that you need because the, the, the dark side of Virgo is that workaholic and perfectionism and this idea that everything has to be perfect before I can be myself. Everything has to be perfect um, before I can you know, put it out there into the world. It's not true. And, and I'm going to invite you to listen to the mental voices in your head that are telling you that because none of that is true. Align where you want to be, notice the magic of life and step into the magic of life. Think about that mirror, you know, that dissolves the second you touch it and you're like, Whoop, look at me. I'm in another, I'm in another realm. <laughs> you can do that. You can really, truly do that if you really, really want it. And if you're really ready, um, you choose where you put your energy. No one else does. No one else makes you do anything. I used to tell my girls that when they were little, no one makes you do anything. Not even me. I can't make you do anything, which seemed kind of backfired a little bit when I got older, when they got older. But <laughs> it's a beautiful attribute to remember, like, no, I am carving my whole path, my new path, my life path, my purpose, and I want to feel joy. And, and I want to really begin to look at where I'm putting my energy. And so if you think of yourself in the beginning of the morning, when you wake up, I actually used to say this when my daughters were little, think of yourself as a full cup. You wake up and you have this full cup of water. And then every time you put your energy somewhere, it gets emptier and emptier and emptier. And all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm depleted. Right? So look to see where you are putting your energy and let go of the things that you just aren't feeding you anymore. It's, it's no time to waste. Um, and, and create a connection because of where, um, I'll bring up the chart again so I can show it to you. Because of all these planets in Pisces, think about, um, and Neptune is one of them, right? Think about putting some of your energy into like the magic of life. Like Virgo wants everything in order and Virgo wants to like see everything put to the test and I need to have proof you know, but thankfully Neptune is conjunct the sun and opposite the moon. So thankfully Neptune is sitting there like, we don't really have to have proof for everything, right? So just chill out, Virgo, we got this, you know? So Neptune will give you sort of like a dreamy, um, mystical, magical uh, experience if that's something that that you're desiring. And if it's not, maybe loosen up the grip that you have on, you know, a certain way that you feel like things need to go again, letting go. Right. And, and because everything's in Pisces, try to look at things from a, a spiritual perspective first. Right. So again, well, the, the, one of the shadow sides of Virgo is blaming other people and blaming the outside world and, you know, well, there was traffic or there's this, or there's that. Well, okay. That's an external. Let's go inward and find out what's really going on in my heart. You know, what's really going on. And, and that's really where we want to be. Um, I'm going to go back to the show, the screen, because I want to just show you these planets again. So we have Mercury sitting with Jupiter. So there's Mercury and Jupiter and Mercury and, and Jupiter enhances your or Mercury uh, conjunct Jupiter enhances your ability to be creative. And now couple that with the Nep Neptune and the sun all in Pisces. And by the way, there's no planets in retrograde. Now we're talking about optimism. We're talking about generosity. We're talking about seeing a bigger vision. We're talking about ah, this like, Oh my God, there's so many amazing things going on in the world. Now, I am extremely aware that it didn't look that way. I'm not some Pollyanna, don't watch the news, don't pay attention. If I don't look at it, it's not happening. I'm not that girl. 
I feel it. I feel it all. I know that the world is like messed up right now. And I know that there are a lot of people hurting. I feel it. And I want you to know that you can do something about it, but not if you're dragging around some old doo-doo that you don't need anymore. So, and if you, if you spend your time scrolling, reading only the news and then talking about how terrible it is and then posting about how terrible it is and then feeling about how terrible it is, nothing's going to change. So use the full moon to monitor how much time you're spending in negativity. How are you contributing? I'm not saying, how are you contributing to negativity in your life? Try to minimize, put some focus on optimism, put some focus on something that you love so much and just do that. I I noticed the other day when I was sitting in my house, um, we can see the sunset from our house. We're about a mile from the ocean and it always turns the inside of the house. So that beautiful orange color, you know, and the way I was sitting on the couch, yes, sitting on the couch, uh, I was looking outside and I could watch the sunset and that doesn't normally happen. Like it's either left or right. And I have to like, I actually have to go outside or drive down to the beach and watch it. But Last night I was watching it set from my perch <laughs> and I just sat there and I just stared at it and stared at it. And I was waiting for the green flash like we do uh, here. And, uh, you know, to just revel in that moment of being able to be like, whoa, I can watch the sunset and watch the sky turn colors and feel so full in this minute. The feeling of gratitude is overwhelming for that one little thing so find those one little things so that you can fill your cup fill your cup fill your cup fill your cup so you can serve the world because the world needs you the world doesn't need you dragging around old stuff the world needs you to be clear and concise with your words and in love and compassion and grace for reals and vulnerable um i love this so one of my there's a lovely um, teacher, you may know her, Brené Brown. Brené Brown defines perfectionism, which is Virgo, as a belief that if we do things perfectly, we can avoid the pain of blame, judgment, and shame. She also helps us uh, distinguish between perfectionism and self-improvement. So perfectionism is rooted in the desire for approval, whereas self-improvement is rooted in personal growth. So. Be willing to grow and expand. Be willing to let go, but don't try to be perfect because there's no such thing. Because once you get, there's two things I want to say and then I'm going to be done. Um, there's two things I want to share. One is, um, and I say this in my yoga classes all the time, there's no such thing as yoga perfect. It's a yoga practice, right? So when people say, well, what's the goal of the pose? I'm like, there, there is no goal. It's just you being in the pose and breathing. Um, and then uh, the other one is, you know, try to let go of your um, need to get there. Because when you get there, there will be here. And then there'll be another there. So there's no such thing as really there. Just be where you are. Yeah. So happy full moon blessings. I will be in Maui leading a beautiful full moon circle, which I am just so excited about. I cannot wait. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, circle with your friends, sit in silence, do what you need to do, journal, but just let go. And if you want your chart read, I would love to do that uh, for you. You can reach out to me at danadamara.com. Super easy to get a hold of. Um, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and uh, I look forward to seeing you somewhere on this path. Thank you so much. Ta-ta for now.